This is Boricua Banks and welcome back to Let's Play The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles where we are continuing on in the fifth case of the game and uh, as you can see we left off last time with us investigating well not really because we haven't had a crime occur yet but we were learning a lot about pawn brokeries and we are currently at um, the one that Sherlock uses the most, which is belonging to Mr. Windebank. So I'm curious to see, I mean, with all this setup, I feel like something definitely is going to happen to uh, Windebank or to his pawn brokery. Maybe someone will rob it or something. So let's continue on. Oh, yes, we had this voice. Um, what? Only a toppings for it. That ain't fair, and you know it. I don't know who's speaking. Oh, it's a woman. Um, The article is barely worth a penny, miss. I cannot offer more. I, I, wow, I can't even remember what I did for him. <laughs> so someone's arguing. Sounds like there's an argument brewing over by the counter. Come on, that can't be right. Have you even had a proper butcher's at it? I've seen all I need to see, young girl. Oh, it's her. Of course, I should have known. The accent. Oh, boy. <laughs> Wait, don't we know? I'm sure I recognize her. Oh, yes, it's the young lady. From Mr. McGilded's trial two months ago. Uh, Gina Lestrade. My thing... I mean, I think I said this before. Lestrade is usually um, a police officer of Scotland Yard or a detective or inspector or whatever that they usually interact with in the Sherlock Holmes books. So the fact that they made her female is cool and then they made her younger. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's basically what they did with Watson, right? Um, the fact that we're seeing her again makes me think we might get some answers to what happened to Mr. McGilded. So I'm intrigued now. Although doing her accent is going to be difficult. <laughs> yeah, he said Gina Lestrade. He's a chancer, earns her cost. I'm not going to do his voice again because I don't remember and I don't care. <laughs> yeah, she's a pickpocket. <clears throat> See, just like I said last episode about uh, pawn shops, that thieves frequently go there to sell whatever they steal, you know? Gordon Bennett, you lot! Gordon Bennett? Wait, how does she still have that? I thought that Iris took it back. <laughs> I guess not. I guess she let her keep it. Hello, Miss Lestrade. I hope you've been well. Eh? What? You remember me then, do ya? God, I, I don't... I, her voice, I don't know. Doesn't feel right yet. Well, I remember being completely surrounded by smoke, that's for sure. So, what are you doing in here? Down and out like the rest of us? Nothing to eat? Come to pop that black weasel? Sorry, coat, have ya? What is it about this black uniform that makes everyone comment on it? <laughs> yeah. Well, good day, unless I'm much mistaken. You would be the young pickpocket who stole our experimental smoke grenade launcher. Looks like you still have it, eh? Ah! Mr. Holmes! So, you have something of value to pawn, do you? Allow me to see the article, and I shall negotiate with Mr. Winterbank on your behalf. Pull the other one, I don't need no help from some stuck-up D. Get out of my business, go on or I'll make trouble for you. As you wish, Miss Lestrade. I will happily remove myself from your presence. Hmm. Vanished. He's really done it, he's gone. I'm sorry, but as I said, there really is no room for negotiation here. 
What is that thing he has in his hand? Some kind of metal disc? Hmm. And you, go on, leave me alone! Oh, Miss Lestrade, just pretend we aren't here. We shan't be offended in the le in the slightest. <laughs> Susato-san can really stand her ground when she wants to. I'm not leaving this shop. You can't make me. <laughs> Whatever. Does she even want to talk to us? Somehow, I didn't really think you were the sort of person who'd use a pawnbroker, Miss Lestrade. Yeah, well I am, alright? I'm a Londoner just like everyone else. That a problem, is it? No, no, not at all. It's just that, well... Alright, get I know what you're thinking. That thing probably don't even belong to her. Probably got it on the dive, didn't she? Yep, that's what I thought. Yeah, I can see it written all over your che Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase? <laughs> oh, like the actor. Well, I, I might have been thinking something along those lines. You're not going to deny it, Mr. Nadahodo? Why not? It's the truth. Alright then, I'm just going to come out and ask you straight. Do you pawn things that you steal from other people? Good on you, Ryunosuke. I, with that kind of person like her, I would be honest too. I'd be like, yeah, you are what you are. <laughs> well, um, I don't know how best to answer that, really. Um, truthfully would be nice. Suppose, sometimes. You're not going to deny it either, Miss Lestrade. But not this time, alright? I swear. That thing belongs to me. The disc that Mr. Windebank is holding. Perhaps we should see what he has to say about all this. Okay. Where is he? Okay. Let's ask. Ask him. <laughs> Mr. Windebank, what exactly is this metal disc that Miss Lestrade has brought in? It seems to have hundreds of tiny little bumps on its surface. Is it like a recording, or is it music? Oh, this is a music disc, you see. For use inside a music box. In a music box? What, you don't even know what a music box is? Tch, you eastern lot ain't too savvy, eh? I know what a music box is, I've just never seen one of those discs before. The small protrusions on the little disc encode the tune to be played by the music box. You simply insert the disc and set the machine going, and beautiful music plays. It's so incredible! Tell us, what tune is on this disc? Well... I'm afraid I couldn't tell you that. There are so many different types of music books, you see. British made, German, Swiss. I have no way of knowing which particular machine this disc was made for. Ah, I see. And that's it in a nutshell. I wouldn't have any customers for an item like this. Even if the young lady forfeited it. Really, I'm already offering more than I should at a penny. That's a packet of lies. It told me it did. He said it was... well... Who told you what? He? Who? Never you mind. It just ain't right, that's all. That disc's worth good money, I know it is. Well then, you'll have to try your luck at another pawnbroker's, won't you? Ah. Hmm. She's been in before, of course, this little tattered Damalian. Wow, never heard of that term. I see. 
and brought some dubious article or other with her every single time, I might add. Dubious? What are you trying to say? I'm an honest customer, mate. So, is there something dubious about the disc she brought in today? Just the fact that we don't know what music box it goes with, right? Well, if only it were that simple. Sorry? What do you mean? What she actually brought in was a storage ticket. Ah, storage tickets. So... Miss Lestrade has actually come to redeem an article from you today, is that right? Yeah, that's right. A girl like me has a lot of stuff worth needs stolen. Alright, yes, that's definitely dubious. The article in question would have been forfeited at midnight tonight. But as she gave me the ticket for it and repaid both the loan and the interest, I was obliged to return the article to her. But what was the article? Do tell us, Mr. Windebank. Because we're nosy like that. The little scamp is wearing it, ma'am. It's the overcoat that she redeemed. Oh. What? What's wrong with that? It fits, don't it? I mean, it's mine, so of course it does. So, what about the disc, then? How does that come into all this? Oh, the disc is something else. A new article to pawn, if that girl and I can agree a price. I'm confused. I thought you said that Miss Lestrade brought in a storage ticket today. It's really quite simple. Yes, the child brought me a storage ticket and the money owed on it, as you say. And this heavy black coat, which you returned to her care as I'd understood it. So, I'm trying to remember, I don't think she was wearing the coat when we first met her, right? That's right, yes, and rather unsurprisingly, as soon as the little ragamuffin put the thing on, she went rifling through the pockets. Oh, you mean... What? Don't you know it's rude to stare at a lady? Ah, I see. So it came from the pocket of the overcoat, did it? If you mean this disc, then yes, exactly, ma'am. And she immediately tried to pawn it. For quite a high price as well. This is all rather suspicious, I think. Is that jacket even hers? Did she steal the ticket and... Like, it was somebody else's, and that's why she quickly was looking through it to see if there's something she could pawn? Give it up. I'm just trying to pawn something like anyone else would. Hmm. Whose jacket was that, then? Miss Lestrade, may I ask who deposited the overcoat here in the first place? Um, well, me. You're lying. Don't tell me this is Mr. McGilded's. It doesn't seem like his style, because he was very flashy. It doesn't really appear to be your size. Me, old man! It's me, old man's, ain't it? Her father? Is it Miss Lestrade? Yes, this is definitely all rather suspicious. Hmm... Oh, out of my way, please. Don't know who said this. Oh. Very fancy gentleman, indeed. He seems kind of mean, though, based on his face, but who knows. Who's this picture postcard English gentleman? Oh, fancy. Very fancy. Good day to you, ladies. Gentlemen. What's your problem, eh? There is no problem. 
as long as you remove yourself, I have a matter to discuss with the proprietor. And if you intend to make a problem of it, I shall see you outside, little girl, for the hiding you deserve. Ooh, yeah, he's rude. Look, ain't it obvious? I ain't done talking with him yet. If you think you're such a gent, you should know how to wait in line. Yeah. No, you are an impudent little brat, aren't you? As well as a pickpocket. How does he know? Eh? Uh? Who... Who are you? How do you know who I am? The question is, how do you not know who I am? You haven't the courtesy even to remember the faces of your victims, it seems. Oh, that's how he knows. Uh, what? You mean I... from you? Broker. Um, yes, sir. I believe this filthy pocket thief has just has just redeemed an article from you, no? Oh, is that jacket his? It looks too small for him, but who knows? Yes, yes, um... The article in question belongs to me. I demand for it to be returned at once. Oh my! Now that's a lie. What are you trying to pull? Give me back my overcoat, you wastrel. And you needless to say. What the hell's with the posing? <laughs> oh my god, is he like another Van Zeeks? Because that was very flamboyant and like over the top. <laughs> well, if he knows, then maybe he... Maybe she did steal it from him. Although, I don't know. Maybe it does fit him? It's hard to tell. Any music box discs, too. No, you can't. You can't have it. You just can't. It's me old man's. Oh, it was. Now it's mine. Goodness, Mr. Nodohodo. All this drama happening right before our eyes. Lucky us, huh? This is a very awkward situation. Yes. I think perhaps we should hear both sides of the story in a little more detail. Okay. Miss Lestrade, is what the gentleman is saying... What do you think? It's all lies, ain't it? Obviously. I swear on my life, I ne I ain't never laid eyes on that dandy before. Let's hear it now, you little ragamuffin. You stole it, didn't you? That ticket you bought in here just now. No, I swear it. I swear to God. It was barely an hour ago. I was walking along the street, minding my own business. When this little gutterling ran into me, I knew at once what had happened. I've been robbed yet again, I thought to myself. Those wretched pickpockets. Yet again? Oh yes, as you can see, I am a man of impeccable style. This isn't the first time that I've been targeted by these back slump scoundrels. <laughs> Dramatic pose. <laughs> Now then, relinquish my overcoat. Ah. Come along now, Mr. Strott. Give the good gentleman his coat back. If you're going to cause trouble, I shall have no choice but to call the police. Hold on, why does everyone think it's me? Just look at this dandy coat. And you think I'm the dodgy one? I'm sorry, but no one's going to believe you. Well, what about evidence? Yeah! Where's your evidence that I stole something, eh? Come on, let's see it. Oh, I have evidence, naturally. 
Ничего? that the article Ms. Lestrade redeemed actually belongs to this gentleman. Of course, we need only consult Mr. Windebank's lit uh, ledger wow, to know the truth. We'll be able to look up the name of the person who deposited the article in the first place. Yes, brilliant. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid that won't be possible. Oh, I never ask customers' names. That's a strict policy of mine. Well, that doesn't help. But why not? Well, now, as you can imagine, some of my customers have circumstances to consider. Shady as heck. A great many of them prefer to maintain their anonymity. Yes, I see. But then, how can you know if an article belongs to the person asking to redeem it? Oh, it's quite simple. Good sir, might I trouble you for the watchword associated with the article in question? Oh, okay. Of course, it's... Professor. Wait. Professor? Hold on, y'all. Is he Professor Moriarty? So, I did ask you guys in a previous episode if you wanted me to openly discuss comparisons between Sherlock Holmes books and this game. And at least two of you responded and told me yes. So, I'm going to do that now. So, Spoiler, possible spoiler alert, I'm sorry. <laughs> if his name is Professor, then there is a chance that he is Professor Moriarty, who is the arch nemesis of Sherlock Holmes. So if you've seen any Sherlock Holmes media, any movie or anything, then likely you already know this name because he is like the Joker to the Batman. You know, he's always behind the scenes of most of the cases that Sherlock has to deal with. And, uh, yeah. Every time I see him, he's depicted differently. Sometimes he's an older gentleman. Sometimes he's a younger gentleman. Uh, sometimes he's rich. Sometimes he's famous or popular in some other way. Uh, sometimes he, has, he is an actual professor. Sometimes he's not. But this guy being so overdramatic and uh, flashy... That would make sense if he really is Professor Moriarty, uh, which means that he's definitely up to something no good. So, interesting. Very interesting. I'm intrigued to see if this turns out to be the truth. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Yes, that's right. And all the evidence we need. This gentleman is the rightful owner of the article, without doubt. Watchword. Interesting. Like a password. So, about these watchwords, Mr. Windebank. As I just explained, I never ask customers' names when they deposit items with me. There are many reasons why certain customers would like to keep their activities secret. <laughs> Sherlock's there. <laughs> Wasn't exactly a subtle glance at Mr. Holmes now, was it? Great detectives have no dark secrets. None at all. Not true, honey. Yes, well, anyway, that's why I always ask for a watchword whenever I accept a new article. In many ways, it's like the secret combination of numbers used to unlock a vault. The date of deposit, a description, and a watchword uniquely identify each item. And of course, then I give the storage ticket to the customer. When someone comes to redeem something, I ask for the ticket and the watchword. Wait, did you ask Gina? Did she know it as well? And if that someone tells you the correct watchword, you return the article? That's right, sir, yes. 
just as soon as the requisite fee is paid. And I have supplied you with the information you require already. But for the avoidance of doubt, the article in question is an overcoat deposited two months ago on 15th of February. With the watchword of Professor. All perfectly correct information, sir. But, but how? Because if he's Professor Moriarty, then he's lying and he just figured out the everything some other way like Sherlock you know so I actually believe her that it could be her father's or someone she knew if not her father but I don't think it's his so she's like really shocked and confused right now really this is beyond a joke now there is no further room for doubt That's it? She's not gonna say anything else? Let's, uh... Oh. Talk to him again? I guess? Excuse me, but who are you? One would expect the Inquirer to introduce himself first. Though clearly you are not British, so perhaps our ways are foreign to you. Oh, sorry. Yes, we're from the Empire of Japan. We're studying here. Oh yes, Japan. I've heard talk of the place. What the? Ah! Oh, I'm sad. oh my god, I didn't think anybody could be more extra than Van Zeeks. Him and Sherlock are pretty neck and neck in a way, but this man, I think this man may take the cake, y'all. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, just checking my moves, yeah. <laughs> Why? Its inhabitants live on some fiery brown-colored soup dressed up with exotic spices. Sir, what are you talking about? You might be thinking of somewhere else. What was with that theatrical gesticulation about. Why are you only commenting on him when Sherlock and Van Zeeks are extra too? Theatrical gesticulation. Like, come on, man. Perhaps. Anyway, if you are a gentleman, sir, you offer your own name first before inquiring after the name of another. Of course, yes. I'm Ryunosuke Nodohodo. I'm a lawyer. Well, a student of law, really. My name is Susato Mikotoba. I am Mr. Naruhodo's assistant. I see. He's not gonna tell us his name, is he? Oh. This feels fake. This feels so fake. That is not his name. And first of all, this is clearly a reference to Benedict Cumberbatch. He has to be Moriarty. He has to. My name is Benedict. Yes, Eggert Benedict. <laughs> like Eggs Benedict. <laughs> Funny. Which I've never eaten before. Enchanté. Oh, are you French now? He's so refined in how he holds himself and how he speaks, but that name is suspicious. Yes! I'm proud of you, Ryunosuke. The hesitation and the the fact that the name is so weird, like, come on. Even even Ace Attorney must have some uh, standards about, wait, that name is way too weird to be one of us. <laughs> now to the matter at hand. Oh my god! Doing? This is not a breakdance competition, sir. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> My overcoat. Return it at once to someone with the style to carry it off. <sighs> every move he makes, every breath he takes, I can't stand watching him. <laughs> and that's a reference to that song. Every move you make. 
you know, every step you take, I'll be watching you. That's a good song. It's a little creepy, though, now that I think about it. <laughs> All these references. Gotta love it. Oh. It doesn't look that good on him, but oh well. So, let that be an end to the matter. And thank you for your custom, Mr. Egget Benedict, sir. Oh, stop it! With such reasonable rates of interest, I may even decide to come back. Hmm. Yeah, this is how we first met her. This is why I ate grown-ups. Just cause I'm a diver, everyone thinks that makes me a liar. And the contents of the coat pockets, if you please, broker. But of course, sir, here is the disc for you. Just this one. That's a suspicious reaction. Hmm. Pardon, sir? I was expecting another. Uh, that is, I deposited another. That was a very suspicious, suspicious response. Another disc? Oh, um, oh dear. I regret to inform you, sir, that what was deposited with me was merely the overcoat. The disc happened to be in one of the pockets, but I was completely unaware of it until now. See, if you're the true owner, then you should have known that. So, Guttling. You're hiding more of what's rightfully mine, are you? Says who, eh? I don't know nothing about it. Very well. Then I shall bid you farewell. Say goodbye to Style. Wait a minute. That disc... is mine. Oh? What? What do you think you're doing, you little trump? You've... you've drawn blood, you filthy animal. Oh my! Yes, there's blood on the disc. It's because of all those sharp little bumps. It almost looks like a razor. Like a saw blade, you know? The man must have scratched his finger on them. I'm sure that will come in handy later. It went through his gloves, eh? I found it first, alright? I mean, it belonged to me, old man. So you're not having it. Or you, you take it. Me? If I hang on to it, they'll have it off of me again. So you keep hold of it. Miss Lestrade, I... Why is this disc so important to her? The music box disc has been entered into the court record. A metal disc used to play music in a mechanical music box, the piece of music which remains unidentified is stored on the disc by means of small protrusions. You there, in the black library. Hand that disc to me at once, please. No, don't. He's lying. Grown-ups are all liars. Ugh, what do I do now? How am I going to resolve this? We need Sherlock's help. But we will have to deal with that in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this. I I am already enjoying it very much. The references, you know, the possibility of this being Moriarty, uh, and this mystery with the disc have me very intrigued. So, until next time, have a nice day. Bye-bye.